What's up you guys? Welcome back. Today we've got a pretty cool review for you. A few months ago, Olsen over at Monster Tech got a hold of me and said that they were getting into the chair game. If you guys don't know who Monster Tech is, check out the video up in the corner there. It is a review of some of their table mounts, which is only a fraction of the things they offer for somebody looking to build out a simulator rig. Suffice to say, I was intrigued. The reason it piqued my interest was because there are of course, a lot of gaming chairs out there. There are some chairs out there designed for driving or racing simulators, but there just aren't any choices with flight sims in mind. If anyone knows this to be true, it is the US Air Force, who is partnering with Monster Tech to build their new flight simulator rigs, complete with, you guessed it, Monster Tech Blackbird flight chairs. More on that later, though. It may be important to some of you to know that Monster Tech provided this chair to me at no expense in order to give them feedback and to create this review. I'm not being paid to make this review and Monster Tech has no input on the content in the video. They have not even seen it until it goes live on YouTube where you guys can all view it too. Let me show you the Monster Tech Blackbird flight chair. The company Monster Tech has partnered with to build this chair is a chair maker out of Germany, and they have been making office chairs by hand for more than 50 years. The materials they've chosen to wrap the chair in are a very high-end PU leather. Right away, you'll see that the chair looks different than other chairs. The backrest is much narrower than my gaming chair's backrest, and it looks reminiscent of a flight chair to me. It's kind of like an ejection seat or a chair that you'd see out of a fighter. Its shape isn't just for looks though. The narrower profile provides more room to the sides of the chair, which is where you're going to be building out your simulator rig potentially. Most gaming chairs pull their DNA from racing chairs. They have these wings on the sides of the chairs, both in the lower torso area and in the shoulders that are designed to cradle you in the back of the chair and limit movement to the left and right. In the flying world, you need to be able to twist in the seat. You've got a lot of dials and buttons and switches on the sides of the cockpit. You have a potentially a stick on the right side or the left side that you need to be able to move your arm and elbow around that area in. And you need to literally be able to twist around and look behind you in the case of the real world. And if you run a VR setup for flying, that can be a challenge in my gaming chair because of those wings that are on the sides. In this Monster Tech chair, you've got tons of room to move in spite of the tremendous support that it gives you. The backrest has an adjustment that you don't find typically on most chairs. You can move it up and down completely independent of any of the other adjustments on the chair. So anybody who's taller or shorter can really get that lumbar support in the exact spot that works best for them. The backrest has sort of a give even when locked out, which I find very comfortable. It doesn't ever feel like you're leaning back into a wall. It has just a little bit of a give for that comfort factor. As far as controls go, you've got the lumbar pressure adjustment crank. You've got the seat height adjustment lever. You've got the seat forward and back release lever, and you've got the seat angle lock and release lever. The seat is very wide. It's 20 inches, which is about 51 centimeters. To give some perspective, my Secret Labs Titan chair is 21 inches at the widest point and kind of tapers back. The shape of the Monster Tech seat is very square front to back, so you'll have that width all the way to the backrest. I find the padding to be very plush on this chair compared to the flatter 
form factor of my Secret Labs chair. And of course, you've got the distinctive center stick cutout. A center stick cutout is a feature long sought after by sim pilots because it allows you to run that long extension and place the stick close to your body in an ergonomically comfortable position and still have full range of motion without getting hung up on the chair at all. Without a center stick cutout, it means you're going to have to push the stick out further away from you so it doesn't get hung up on the chair or run a shorter extension or no extension to get it closer to you but above the chair base. The seat also has its own unique adjustment forward and backward. So in addition to all the typical chair adjustments, you've got the ability to move the seat forward and backward, which allows you to get it to just the right spot behind your knees to be comfortable. The armrests are on the smaller side. They are designed to get out of the way of all the attachments that you're likely to be building out around them. They're adjustable forward, backward, up, down, left, and right. The material that they're made out of is basically the industry standard at this point. It's like a soft rubber. It is not a stuffed armrest that you're bound to work down to a screw in the elbow after a year or so. I haven't had any issues with that material on my Secret Labs chair, which I've run for more than three years now. So I expect it to be comfortable and look good for a very long time. Moving further down the chair, we get to the undercarriage. The undercarriage is incredibly overbuilt. It is clear to me that Monster Tech knew that you'd be attaching a lot of heavy parts to this chair. When you talk about the sticks, the throttles, the Monster Tech mounts, you're going to add a lot of weight to an already heavy chair, and then you're going to sit on it. So the legs are incredibly strong. The oleo strut is very, very beefy. And then there are the wheels. The wheels are significantly larger than my already significantly large Secret Labs wheels. I just have to show you guys the wheels to give you some idea of how much bigger and stronger these wheels are than those wheels, which were already good wheels. They're really high-end wheels. They're big, they're strong, they also have lockout on every wheel. If you're on a hard surface, you can expect the wheels not to move. Additionally, they have a very tacky grip texture to them, like a rubbery type of a grip. So if you have them locked out, but you're still on a slippery floor, you can expect a pretty good amount of grab to that floor to keep you in one spot. One missed opportunity, I think, was the ability to lock out the entire twist mechanism of the chair. When you're using rudder pedals, your feet are off the floor, so you're not bracing yourself against a non-moving object. And so when you push back and forth on pedals vigorously, you get a little bit of movement in the chair. It's not a problem, really. It doesn't take you out of the game, and it doesn't keep you from flying well. It's just something that would have been a nice touch knowing that most of us that are going to use a chair like this are also going to have rudder pedals and will be pushing back and forth left and right and potentially moving the chair back and forth a little bit okay so when it comes to adding monster tech tech to the chair you can go a lot of different ways i'll just talk to you about the way that i chose and you can go to the website and see all the different permutations that you could put this chair into. I chose a mouse pad on the right arm, a center stick with a 200 millimeter extension, and a throttle on the left arm with a button box behind that, which is kind of cool because it mimics the type of a setup you get in a real jet where not everything is in front of you. Some of the switches and dials and buttons are kind of behind you a little bit. If you have a throttle set up like I do with a button box behind it, the swing away will not work because of the geometry. When it comes to adding or removing the center stick assembly, they've made it very fast and easy to line up and just a few turns of a couple thumb screws and you've locked it down with strength. The metal plates that it uses to secure the entire thing are monsters so you won't ever have to worry about strength with this setup the swing away assemblies are also super super strong and it is very simple to swing them away it's even simple to just take the entire thing off if you just want to 
pull the entire assembly off the chair while you're not using it. It's pretty easy to do that. I will say that the swing away arms feel a little bit like a Gen 1 system. The thumb screws can get hung up on each other sometimes and it does not lock in the swung away position. But Olsen assures me that he is working on a Gen 2, but as it stands right now, it's very functional and very easy to use. At the heart of this chair is just a really comfortable chair. Even with a narrower profile, it has tremendous lower back support and is just super comfy. I was very happy with the comfort of my Secret Labs Titan, and this chair is much more comfortable than that. Durability is obviously an important factor in any expensive chair. I've only had this chair for a few weeks, so I really can't speak to the durability of it. Based on the materials and the construction of the chair, I expect it to last a long time, but I'll keep you guys informed on whether that is the case or not. I will say that it has some strong competition because my Secret Labs chair has lasted me more than three years and shows very few signs of its age. The price. This is an expensive chair. This chair costs $700 US before shipping. Is it the most expensive chair you can buy? Certainly not. Logitech slash Herman Miller make a chair that's $1,500 and it's not specifically designed for simulators at all. My Secret Labs chair is around $450 to $500. It's also not designed for simulators, but it's also a very solid chair, a good choice. Is this chair worth $700? Obviously, that's a call that you guys are all going to have to make yourselves, but I do think it's worth $700. The reason is because it can do things and has features that less expensive chairs don't have. It's got adjustment that you can't get in my Secret Labs chair for $500, and it's tailor-made to accept all of the Simpit gear that I'm going to want to put on it in a way that a less expensive chair is not designed specifically for. I wanted to talk a little bit about the future plans that Olsen has told me about for this chair. As far as the desk chair variant goes, you'll soon be able to choose different fabrics, different colors. You'll be able to put custom embroidery on the chair if you like. You'll even be able to go as far as to change the shape of the chair, actually adjust the form to your liking, which is kind of wild if you think about it. That's as custom as custom gets. I mentioned that the US Air Force is going to be putting the Monster Tech chair in their sim rigs, which are incidentally also made by Monster Tech. And you in 2021 will also be able to do that. They'll be selling a version that you can put into an existing sim rig or add to your order of a Monster Tech sim rig. Final thoughts. What are the cons? The price could certainly be a con. It is an expensive chair. There's no doubt about it. No swivel lock is, I think, a missed opportunity. It would be nice to be able to lock out all movement in the chair when you are jamming on rudder pedals and the like. When it comes to the pros, there's quite a few. It's extremely comfortable off the top. It's just straight up more comfortable than my Secret Labs Titan, which is a comfortable chair in its own right. I've been very happy with the Titan, but this chair is just more comfortable, both in the lower back support and in the seat. It's got more adjustability than other office chairs. It's got your standard adjustment points that you get from any office chair, but it also has a vertical adjustment for the backrest and a horizontal adjustment for the seat that you just don't get in other chairs. The whole thing is built like a tank. They are very aware that you are going to put a lot of weight into this chair, not just however heavy you happen to be, but also all of the metal hardware that you're going to be bolting onto this thing if you're doing a chair mounted sim rig. From headrest to wheels, the thing is very overbuilt. It's tailored to work with the Monster Tech system. I mean, you just can't get a chair that is more designed to accept all the Monster Tech gear than one made by Monster Tech. And you can see it when you start to add pieces to the chair and you see how close the tolerances are between the hardware and the chair itself. It's clear that it was built around the Monster Tech system. And because of that Monster Tech system, it is easy to convert it to just a standard office chair. If you want to go from flight sim mode to I'm working at my desk mode, it's very simple to do that, very quick and easy to get it to a normal, comfortable 
office chair. You guys already know that I'm a big fan of companies that innovate and refine. Monster Tech definitely is in that category. They have definitely brought us a chair that has features that you can't get in other chairs and definitely caters to us flight sim pilots. And they give us all that at the quality level that Monster Tech is well known for. The Monster Tech Blackbird flight chair is pretty expensive. From a value perspective, for the extra money you're paying, I think you're getting extra features and getting a chair that can do things that other chairs can't do. In my opinion, it's an outstanding chair. If there's a better chair for flight sims out there, I just haven't found one yet. If you guys are interested in picking one up yourself, I'll leave a link to the website in the description below to make it easy for you. If you guys have questions about the chair that I haven't answered in the video, feel free to throw those in the comments and I'll do my best to get to them. Thank you so much for coming back for another video, you guys. I appreciate all the likes and all the subs. You don't know how much it helps the channel out. Definitely check back often to see what we got cooking over here. Stay safe out there, guys. See you.